it it feels advanced. It's actually a couple, a couple of hackery, but what I what I really intended with this talk was to try to get you guys inspired, and maybe we figure out that uh, there are some opportunities in tooling to leverage a better desktop support, especially in the developer experience, knowing that uh, we have this we have this uh, Microsoft WSL setup that is towards developers. So we may take uh, a ride on that and improve Flutter tooling for this. I'm not able to demonstrate anything production ready for you guys. It's just a bit of a hackery. But maybe in a couple of months, we can discuss what the community has built with these ideas, hopefully so. Let's just wait uh, one more minute because I don't know the setup of the recording, but we're supposed to start exactly at five. <coughs> it's been going so far. Good. All right, I'm too anxious to wait those final seconds. So as I was saying, my name is Carlos Nielton. I work with Canonical, the WSL team. Uh, our main focus is ensuring that our users are capable of experiencing a true Ubuntu experience on Windows. And at the same time, leveraging the, the nice integration that uh, I'm not sure if you, all you guys said saw what uh, Craig showed earlier, how deep integrated the Ubuntu and the Windows were in his presentation. That, that's a nice feature for the WSL. And knowing that WSL targets developers and uh, Flutter is all about developer experience. It's the most productive UI framework I've, I've ever seen. Uh, I saw guys talking about Qt. Qt is great, but uh, I'm sorry, I cannot compare it nowadays. I used to love Qt until I, I figured out Flutter. So as I, as I was saying, I don't have anything production ready to share. It's just a couple of random ideas I collected throughout a couple of months working with a project that uh, target Linux and later was ported to Windows. So I got some learning during the time and I started to think about since we have uh, stable support for the desktop platform, why not increasing our support in, in such a nice environment so it becomes easier for developers to play nice with both platforms and see right, right away whatever changes they do in their source code being compiled for both. So I see most of you are really well experienced in Flutter, right? Uh, I said, <laughs> when, when, when I submitted this talk, it was supposed to be an intermediate thing, not because of the, the, the contents themselves, but because of this brainstorming idea that I wanted to trigger, trigger on you and let you think about it throughout the, the next couple of weeks. So, You are a developer working on an app and want to support, support desktop platforms. Can we develop for both Linux and Windows from a single source code location? I'm not asking about a, a single source code tree, but a location, specific path somewhere checked out from where I can compile for both platforms. Currently, we know that Flutter is multi-platform, not cross-platform. I'm, I'm not checking out the GCC on Windows and compiling for Linux. But can we do something alike? Can we seamlessly explore the app on both platforms during development time? Can we leverage UI changes using hot reload on both simultaneously? This can be quite tricky. Uh, I think I can skip this part. Everybody knows why Flutter at this moment, right? And, and all right, why desktop? This is a good question because uh, Flutter started as a mobile first, but uh, as we've seen, we started supporting desktop as a stable. And the good thing about desktop is this big screen, real estate, massive keyboard. You, you can leverage a productive user experience. It's quite different from, from the limitations you have in form factors of a mobile device. And also we have business work cases, and also we can trust on powerful hardware. The, the simplest desktop nowadays 
features 8 gigs of RAM, is a very powerful CPU, GPU. So we have lots of room for playing nice with desktop using Flutter. And why the real cell true? Here's the, the point, because uh, as I was saying, WSL2 is all about the developer experience. So does the Flutter tools. It's the, the, the greatest experience I've seen in UI toolkit. And uh, some users, some developers might be just required because of the company policy they work for. There are lots of reasons why developers should stay on Windows. And being that a constraint, a requirement, or a wish of the developer to stay on Windows, he can leverage the WSL2 because it's a native Linux. We have graphic support, as Craig showed earlier. We have a strong integration with the Windows host, and this will be a foundation for what we're going to see up, up front. And also, no VM management. If you guys are used to develop with Qt in, in old days, for instance, and you were targeting both platforms in a single source code base, you used to do some kind of ping pong between your local Git tree and the GitHub and checking out on the other side, compiling on Windows, compiling on Linux. And this ping pong could take very long. For a small change in its style or a, a position of a widget, you would have quite a long time to see the results on both platforms. And managing VMs is quite complicated as well. Not everybody is willing to, to do the network setup, NAT, bridge, whatever. And Ubuntu is here to play nice with WSL and play nice with Flutter as well. So let's see if there is a match. The, the setup I'm using here is a Windows 11 because we can leverage the latest from WSL2 from the store, latest Flut Flutter stable on Windows, the Ubuntu preview application from the Microsoft Store. Are you guys familiar with the WSL? Uh, just a quick, a quick overview for those who are not. We have this uh, platform, this foundation that Microsoft offers as an application on the Microsoft Store with the kernel, with the, the utility VM, whatever, everything we need to bootstrap a Linux distribution. The user space, the root file system, everything else comes from the distro package as also as another Microsoft Store application. In our case, it's Ubuntu. So we ship uh, an application that is used as a distribution launcher, but we also ship the, the root of S itself, the tarball that we use to extract and compose the, the VHDX, the, the virtual machine file system that uh, we're gonna have the, the user space on. So knowing that latest table Flutter also on Linux, so two versions of of Flutter on each platform and your editor of choice. We're gonna use here uh, Visual Studio Code because it's easiest, but we could use Vim as well. <laughs> I usually do it, by the way. I really like it. Uh, just want to notice uh, in the WSL there is a trick. If you decide to use uh, Flutter from Snap, it's it's the easiest experience for installing Flutter, uh, even compared to Mac. But uh, because of the way Windows appends its path on the Linux distribution file system path as well, you end up with uh, the Windows taking precedence over the, the snap path location. So if you try to run Flutter right away, you're going to try, you, you're going to launch Flutter from Windows. And that becomes a mess because that's a bad script file that's going to try to run CMD. It's quite messy. So you might do some trick with your bash RC to make sure that you put the snap path before, and then you always trigger your flutter from snap. It's quite handy. Otherwise, you can do as uh, we usually do, install lots of the, the packages, like ZUT, ZUNZ, Clang, and whatever, and do the, the other way, or even checking out from Git. It's up to, to you. So the first approach that I, uh, I like to call attention on is file system sharing. As we saw earlier, uh, we can access file system of one distro from the Windows side or from inside the distro access the Windows file system. So maybe we could build from one single source location. Uh, I'd like to demonstrate, but I think uh, this back and forth will not be, be nice. Uh, I'll go straight into the point. Doing that, it, it allows you showing both applications once, but compiling it becomes quite tricky because we start polluting the dark tool cache. 
with code that might be specific from platform, especially when you start to rely on plugins that have different implementations, those federated plugins. So this is good if you have a very small app that you just want to see once, you don't want to play with. This is not as nice. This is what we can achieve easily, but you cannot iterate over this. You need to stop what you're doing for Flutter, pub, get again to recreate the, the cache and then Flutter build again. It's not that nice experience just yet. If there was a practical way to sync the working tree to a different place on the Windows 5 system, then we could maybe overcome that because then you have the same repository state, same working tree, but copy it between both. And there is also a caveat in the previous setup because compiling through a, sh a file system that is being shared over a network, even though it's a local network, can be quite a, a low performance thing. So having the same state of repository, check it out inside the distro file system and somewhere else inside the Windows file system, maybe we can do a better experience. Since in repository, it's not that complicated. We have tools inside Linux for that. We have iNotify to monitor the, the file state and we have our sync. So we can leverage a quite hacky way of making sure both are in sync independent of the, the, the version control system. As you are working with your working tree, dirty as is, you keep syncing and you are able to at least have a nicer performance when compiling. You can achieve uh, the native performance uh, while compiling and having the, all the changes you do on one side replicated on the other side. This is important uh, to note that since we are relying on iNotify, we need to be inside Linux. So Linux becomes the first source of true. But if you noticed uh, when Craig was demonstrating the launching Visual Studio Code, we can use the same experience in here. We checked out inside WSL, we open Visual Studio Code, we do whatever we're doing, and our sync keeps piping that to Windows. So it's easy to go there and either flutter run or just hit R to hot reload if you're already running. It's uh, one step advanced. And also since our sync has some like, filtering ways, so we can easily just our sync uh, the, repo the parts of the repository we want, like everything inside slash lib, or maybe certain packages only. It, we can be quite creative in composing this, this small script. And we got something like this. Here I have uh, the, the Linux version. Uh, I think I can, yeah, the Linux version and the Windows version of the same app, the same counter. And uh, as I do changes, in this example, I was just changing the color, the main color of the application. Uh, the ER sync thing was pulling all the data relevant to Windows. And then it, it still requires the developer to go on the terminal tab where Flutter Run is running, go there and hit the R. It's an improvement, but we are not there just yet. If there was a practical way to do the hot reload on the Windows side without having to go to the tab and do the thing, then we would be nicer. So we, there is a way. I found this uh, quite abandoned repository on GitHub. Uh, it's been like six month, 16 months without any updates, but it's a nice implementation of a file system monitoring through Dart because Dart offers a high level API for file system watch. And uh, also using process monitoring, he was able to notice when the file system changes and inject an R inside the, inside the process standard input, so triggering hot reload. So if we combine those tools, we can get an experience like this. <laughs> so here the developer is able to work in one single source location, get productive, see the results on both platforms on the fly throughout reload. I 
it's supposed to take more time because I would demonstrate this on the fly, but if I do this, uh, the recording will be weird. Questions? If not, I have a couple more bonus for you. There are a couple of ways to look into this this problem from the point of view of increasing the the, the developer experience uh, with Flutter. One way would be changing the Flutter tool to do this back and forth, because as I mentioned, this is built on top of pure Dart. So we could embed that into the Flutter tool. Make the Flutter tool understand WSL as a target because nowadays we're able to understand, for instance, Android emulator. But the Android emulator doesn't compile. So it is a little bit different in architecture, but we could look to WSL as an emulator, a Linux emulator, that is capable of compiling its own application. So the Flutter tool could be running inside Windows, developers having the Windows experience, but at the same time, it would be piping to inside WSL and say Flutter inside WSL compile this and render for me. And we would have both screens simultaneously. This, I think it's it's the best way to approach the story, but it's not well thought just yet. I think it there is room for a better design improvement, maybe figure out better ideas. Good. Well, I, I didn't do a proper research in this topic. It, it's possible that somebody else in community is, is doing something similar because this I know with 5 plus R sync script is not very complicated to achieve. And this idea of having a, a, a Dart process that triggers Flutter to and is able to inject a request for hot reload through its under input is not that complicated. I was willing to do that. Uh, more explicitly looking into the, the, the VM API, but it was more difficult to get to the point. So I think we have room for ideas based on those hackerish attempts. Great. Yeah. Canonical. <coughs> this can be quite tricky. If you if you edit too fast, you might uh, skip one I notify call because you were still are syncing. So as I said, this is hackery. There are, there are lots of room for improvement. And also the file system uh, on Windows can be tricky, especially when you erase files because it doesn't actually erase. So, yeah. As I said, uh, it's hackery, it's just ideas, but we have room for growing those thoughts. And uh, any more comments, questions on this? So as I was saying, I got uh, some bonus for you guys. If there was an easy way to verify that my app is deployable on both platforms by packaging in their native formats, but I think this is not a surprise for you. You already know the, the answer. Because we have MSIX for Microsoft, it works great. It's very easy to, to deploy an MSIX out of a Flutter. And we have Snap for, for the Linux way. It's not that complicated either. And this, this is a simple application that is a bit more complicated, relies on uh, 
Um Flutter Secure Storage that for Linux requires uh, JSON CPP, libsecret. So we have quite evolving application to deploy with a relatively easy recipe for deployment. Uh, the, the result of a DMSIX, I was, highlight, I was highlighting here that the, the end result of this application ships the, the DLLs correctly, so we don't have anything to be afraid of in terms of the famous DLL hell. And the same happens with the snap. We can be sure that uh, the, the SO objects are shared properly inside being lib where we have the R path pointing to. So no problem with uh, com version compatibility, that kind of stuff. So very well sealed way of deploying. And all those experiences, all those packagings, all, all those iterations were done live version through the BSL. Even the Snap itself was, was generated, the application was compiled by launching Snapcraft inside the WSL, generating the package, inspecting it uh, using 7z4 Windows, by the way. And, uh, and then we can either install it and test it and making sure that everything just works. So without rebooting, without creating a hassle of managing lots of different VMs and what, what kind of Git hackery, we're able to go from the source, the very bare bones state and iterate over, find the best design, find the best experience and package and test the package. I wouldn't say that this uh, is the complete story for testing the, the deployment package, but it's a way to make sure that not, no pieces, no bits are missing. It's a good starting point. So we can cover the end-to-end -end experience for the developers. Yeah, it's quite fast. Now, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs>